right, so the next thing we're going to do is take a look at what it would look like if you had a truss that actually created this piece uh, instead of using separate elements like we've been using. So if we look at the 3D image of this, they depict it as a truss. Now I, su I would think that they would bring these pieces out individually and then weld them together to make it act like a truss, but we could make it as a truss. And I did that, and so I'm going to place one of these trusses in sort of next to this assembly of columns and braces and beams. So if I go to my level two here, zoom out a little bit, and I'm going to come in and I'm going to go to my structure and truss. And there is a truss in here called JMSG, which is shortcut for the architect's initials. And it's going to place a truss. It's going to have the bearing cord on the bottom. It's going to place it on top of beam. So let's go ahead and place that. And I'm going to place it just from the intersection of this grid here to the intersection of this grid here. And it'll place that truss in. And if we go to the 3D view, there's that truss. So if I tab select in here and go in here and actually let's see if we can isolate that category. So I'm going to isolate just the structural framing and if I pick this guy, spin around it, you can see that this is a truss and it's basically very actually quite similar to the beam system but it's a truss so it has a series of lines that these different beams are attached to. So if I reset the temporary height isolate I can actually pick that truss. If I go to edit type you can see that you can set the beam type for the top cores, the vertical webs, the diagonal webs, and the bottom cords. Right? And there's also an overlap that I set up. If we take a look at this truss, so if I right click on it and go to Edit Family, basically it has a top cord, a bottom cord, and then these webs, and then a web line. So the vertical webs are black, the diagonal webs are green, and the top and bottom cords are magenta. You can create these up here by selecting these and creating them yourself. So if I were to go to File, New, Family, and I were to pick a structural truss and click Open, basically what it does is it gives you a framework for creating a truss. So I could come in and create a top cord. I could come in and create a bottom cord. I could come in and create a web. So I'm going to create a web here and create a web here. And I'll create a web from midpoint to midpoint. And <clears throat> Now that is basically a truss. Now I could create some parameters that control the offset of this truss from the end or from the center. So I'm going to go to create a line dimension and I'm going to tap my tab key until I get that point and I'll pick the midpoint of that and then I'll tap my, I don't need to tap it, but get that point and I'll pull this out and I'm going to make that an equal. And then I'm going to come in and I'll tap the tab key until I get that point again, tap the tab key until I get that point again, pull that out, and I'll give that a parameter. So let's give it a new parameter, and we will call that parameter top chord distance. Click OK, and now let's flex this and see if it works. So I'm going to open up my Family Types dialog, pull it over here, and go down to Top Chord Distance and set that to, let's say, 18 feet, and hit Apply. And you can see that it adjusts that and keeps it equal. 
I can also just test it by testing the overall length of the truss. So right now it's 80 feet. If I do 60, hit apply, and you can see that that is adjusting. So if I save this, I'm just going to save it to my desktop for right now. Save it as truss test. I can load that into my project. And I can actually place that truss. So I'm going to go to my level two. I'm going to go to structure and truss. And truss test is current. And I'll come in here and pick that truss from there to there. And if I go to my 3D view, you will see that truss right there. And then it, that and let's tab select let's select that and let's isolate those two All right so now i have that truss there and it's it's just placed default wide flanges on there for right now i could actually pick the truss itself go to edit type and say for the vertical webs i would like to have that double c and click ok and now it changes it to that double c column now you do have these offsets here um, that occur when things intersect. You could feasibly go in here and pick that, unpin it, pull it into this other truss, and try to cope it as best you can. It may or may not work. Let's try it. Let's bring that in. And let's try coping. Cope that and that right and you could go in and sort of clean that up a little bit if you wanted to but that is how you might do it with the truss now you'll have some problems mitering and things like that because the truss is a unique separate object and trying to miter it to another beam um, will not necessarily work the same way okay so that's it for this part um, the next time we'll be going over curtain walls and ramps